This is future me problem now. I'm the one who decided to do this, so let's leave it up to the future of myself to suffer. Hello and welcome back to another sewing vlog. It's been a hot while for me since I worked on any new sewing vlog even though I've been jam-packed with many projects but with things getting busy for me and con season picking up again, it's been hard to film and record everything. In this video, I'll be making the full costume of Annette's time skip outfit from Fire Emblem Three Houses. I actually made this around last summer but I haven't been able to get to it so finally getting all the videos and the process of it now. So I have Annette's reference and breakdown all ready to go so I'm starting on her probably gonna go ahead and start on her blouse right here which I have the fabrics for so for this project I'm gonna actually be doing uh, some dyeing mostly because I couldn't find all the colors I need within the same materials and I wanted the material to match so I got a bunch of uh, white here that I'm using for the dress but I'm also gonna be using it for the, um, the sweater underneath so I'm gonna go ahead and dye that blue I'm probably gonna be dyeing it a uh, two shades of blue because there's gonna be like a teal and a dark blue after that for some of the accessories and trims so we're gonna go ahead and start uh, drafting up the patterns and then after I figure out how much materials to cut from that I'm gonna go ahead and start dyeing them so here we have is the front bodice for the sweater slash blouse of Annette. Um, I'm doing a little drape on it. It's been a while since I've done draping, so I, I kind of have to like rethink on what I'm doing. And also, it's a stretch garment, so it works a little differently. Uh, basically, just a lot more smoothing out and just stretching to make sure that it's fitting the mannequin perfectly. But yeah, I've got the first part in, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut that out, and I'll do some twerking after. Uh, putting tw twerking tweaking after uh, I uh, I sewed um, everything together and then from there on I can just modify from there but yeah I'll go ahead and work on the back and figure out the sleeves after that as well So I just finished transferring the mock-up onto the paper version. So I have the front and back here and that's all set. And then I went ahead and did the marking for the, the lines and the grid because I'm actually, this is gonna be the, um, the master pattern because I'm gonna be making another version of this where uh, you see all these lines here. It's gonna be separated into all the panels so that I can reconstruct that back into a sweater, sweater, sweater because she has those giant uh, rib knit and it's probably like an inch and a quarter. I did that's what I did mine. I did mine an inch and a quarter because that's what it looks like. It's about for the perfect size. But yeah, I'm gonna probably go ahead and work on the sleeve next, and then I won't be able to work on this until I dye the fabric, which the dye hasn't come yet. So while I wait, I'll probably go ahead and jump into working on the cape or the dress. Actually, I'll probably jump into working on the cape next. Before dyeing everything, I also went ahead and worked on the sleeves along with finalizing all the other parts to make a finalized pattern. So over here we have the pattern for Annette's blouse which I'll be cutting out once I got the fabric all dyed. So here's the sleeve that I split and here's the blouse that are sliced into um, many panels. It's enough slicing! I'm gonna sew them together to create that rib look and this is the original pattern. So I'm still debating if I'm gonna double layer or not. So this is gonna be like the outside and then uh, if I need to double it then this will be for the inside. But yeah, I will figure that out and once I cut the outer layer and put that together first. Oh, and also there's a collar for that as well, but I'll put that together after I have the blouse because I kind of need to take a look at the rib and basically uh, align the collar to the, um, to the blouse as well. Eventually. So I'm trying hard not to scream because I probably scream for like five minutes already over here but uh, it looks like the pot wasn't stainless <laughs> after all I probably didn't pay attention to it and my leftover dye from my last project was still black so when I dye this the black mix with that blue teal dye and then it made the gray tint to color so now I wasted four bottles of uh, dye and uh, four years of fabric so yay me Ugh. So now I'm gonna have to go get more fabric and more dye and redo this and with a different pot. Uh, two 
thousand years later. All right, it's been hundreds of years and I'm crying, but I redid everything and it came out exactly the way I want it finally after the second time. It just set me back by, you know, two weeks of backlog work because I had to wait for the new fabric to come in. Uh, they ran out of the fabric I originally bought to dye the first time, so I went with the uh, cotton uh, jersey knit instead because it, it still works the same way as the original one. Uh, just bought it somewhere else and redid everything in the stainless pot this time so it came out exactly the shade I wanted so uh, thanks for that it just took a while even though I've been dying for you know for a long time you know I still make mistakes I'm still scared of dying big quantity stuff so yeah and then there's like about like four yards of this in here so I dyed more than I need just in case because you can never go wrong with having extra especially for dyeing stuff because I don't want to redo that dyeing process again. Okay, so most of the fabric for the blouse is all cut out. You can see millions of panels. This is for the outer part of front and back, and then you get the sleeves, and then I'm also doubling it up, so these are what's going to be going on the inside, so it's going to be a nice weight to it. Otherwise, one layer itself is just too thin, and the structure won't really stay, especially for the sleeves. But yeah, uh, got all of that cut out so I'm gonna go ahead and start piecing all these panels together to build back the front and back part Later. So this took about six episodes of Fruit Basket to uh, sew all together and then uh, overlock and then I decided to also top stitch it as well just so that all the lines stay even and clean. Front and back's all done, yay. Now I'm just working on the lining for the inside and just attaching that and then working on the sleeve collar and hopefully that's all for this blouse. After sewing together all the panels and piecing it back, I finished off the sleeve and put everything back together basically like a puzzle piece. And here we have the final finished blouse of the inside blue sweater. Everything's sewn together. All the strips were put together to form the front and back bodice. Uh, put on the puff sleeves and gather a little bit on top. And then most of the gather goes on the bottom for that bell shape. Put on the waistband, not the waistband, uh, the, the wrist, the, the armband. Yeah, the armband and also the turtleneck as well. And yeah, it's all finished. All this part were top stitch on as well so all the seams are laid nice and smooth and yeah the blouse is all finished and gonna go ahead and do the dress on it So for our next cape slash shawl here, I'll be using Macau 333. I'll be using this commercial pattern to make the cape. I'm going to be doing alterations and modification to it so it fits the silhouette and shape more. So for this one, I'm going to be fixing the neckline, raising it really high up because it's actually really quite low. Um, she has a hoodie and a collar on the cape. So I'm going to actually be drafting the hoodie separately and I'll do that after I modify the cape first. So I'll be modifying the front of the cape pattern in the back I'll probably slice it to spread out a little bit more just so that it has a little more drape and flair to it but yeah so that will be next to do So here I have the mock-up of the cape actually all finished on one side and it looks like it worked out. It looks a little funky right now mostly because everything's pinned together. I haven't sewn it but I was just testing out the measurements and, and the size of it and it actually fits. So I'm going to go ahead and transfer that into the paper pattern and then cut that out on the actual fabric right after. So I did modification on it, raised the neckline, you get the hoodie which is like a sandwich between the collar and the cape itself. And then you get the back. I just have a little bit more to add to it like I'm gonna flare it out just like a couple more inches and yeah so the capes are looking good and I'm gonna go ahead and start on the next process for it
A few inches later. All right, so the cape is all done and finished. So for the neck part here to attach, I'm probably gonna be sewing on two snaps because they're not actually fully closed because there's actually gonna be a neck piece right here for the ribbon in the middle. So I'll probably just attach um, two snaps that connects to the blouse so that that's the one of the way that it can stay on. So all the pieces for the accessory that's 3D printed came to me from Dangerous Lady. So next up is that I need to spray paint and attach some of the gems onto the little accessories and then attach them onto the outfit. Uh, I spent some time spreading everything out and organizing them because there's actually quite a lot of small pieces. I want to make sure everything's there, nothing is lost, but everything seems to be there. I'm going to go ahead and put them in the bags and organize them and paint them and then after that I can go ahead and attach them to the cape and part of the dress and wherever else it needs to go. A few moments later. All right, so I'm working on the accessories right now for the cape. It's almost complete. There's actually a lot going on onto the cape, but I think I got everything down right now. I'm just working on the last part, which is the center piece of the cape that goes in between the the blouse and the outer cape right there. So I'm going ahead and just sewing up the trims on and then putting it together and probably attaching it either onto this or making it detachable. I'll see how it looks. And here we have um, the tassel for the side of the cape, which I also added on already. So it's all finished. I'm probably gonna do snaps maybe. I usually try to make like these kind of pieces like detachable as possible, mostly because, you know, for easy storage and also in case of wash and whatnot, you don't wanna be like washing these with it because they can break or uh, they won't be good to wash with the outfit. So I usually try to make that detachable but yeah so I'm gonna go ahead and finish off this part So here we have the completed cape early with all its accessories and whatnot uh, I made half of it detachable with either snaps or back pin and the other smaller part like the one on the hoodie right here and this part um, it's just glued on but yeah mostly the big part I want to make it detachable just so that it's easier if it needs to be washed and whatnot and storing so for here there's like a little pin backing and the collar it's actually all snapped so you can actually just take the whole thing off and for this part right here on the shoulders is also pin backing but yeah, everything's all complete. Uh, I finished the cape a while back, but I had to work on the accessories. Um, once they arrived, I um, you know uh, sand the corner, prime, paint, and then work it on. It actually took a little longer than it actually looks because I had to figure out basically the silhouette and how it looks. I also have the center right here that goes in the middle which will be attached when, um, once I put on the blouse because I also going to put a pin backing probably right there just to like it pops it right on. But yeah, this doesn't look like it but it actually took like two hours to put together just for this little bow tie right here. But the cape and the blouse is complete so next up I'm going to be working on the dress. Later. So I have the mock-up here that I did for Annette's dress. Uh, please don't mind the multi-color. I grab whatever fabric I have in my scrap bins that works. Yeah, that's really similar to the fabric that I'm using, which has like a slight stretch to it. So I'm making sure it, it form fits the body smoothly. So I basically just draped it and did my uh, first mock-up from then there. And so far it's looking good. And the initial shape and silhouette I want, it's basically similar to like a mermaid uh, silhouette and then the front right here is going to be um, sweetheart bodice so far it's looking good I just need to uh, take in a couple spots like the bust line here and a little bit of the side maybe uh, raise this part just a little more but yeah so far looking good um, hopefully uh, this is what I wanted so um, I'm probably gonna add like um, what's it called? Much more job. Horse hair braid on the bottom or some sort of interfacing just to help out the flare a bit, just so that it looks like the shape of her bottom hem. And then figure out the design and that's going on here. But I think the dress is a little less stressful. <laughs> Why do I tell such lies? Anyways, before all that, I had the mock-up finalized and made into a pattern and then started cutting everything out and piecing it together. 
it's a little clutter over here on the table but I got everything laid out and everything cut out and sewn so the lining's all ready and I um, sewed on the, the bottom portion onto the dress so it's all done so what next I'm gonna do is sew them together start piecing together the dress and then apply on the blue design that goes onto these bottom portion that the little loopy and whatnot I sew I'm figuring out on um, what I want to use for that so after I sew it together I'll figure that out and then worked on the hem and yeah I can start piecing everything together for the dress Later. So you're not seeing double here. There's actually two of them. Yeah. And for that reason, it's because I had to remake it. <gasps> the first one over there, up there, is the first one I made from the last scene, which I said, yeah, it is almost done. But then after putting on the testing and everything, final result, I don't know what happened. I think I warped the fabric. Maybe I... I cricket it when I was cutting it on the green line so it wasn't on the green line so one side was um, in the lining was basically shorter than the other fabric and it basically was just pulling the hemline up and the hem was just not even and no matter what I did would not fix it because the bottom was already interfaced and everything so I couldn't stretch it you do not want to stretch the fabric usually on the bottom hem ever so nothing could be done. I had no choice but to start over and here's the second one that I started over that took a week and in the end it wasn't even the same fabric because I went back and they had no more than knit for the white one so I just had to go with a complete different fabric so that means I have to uh, use a different I basically have to use whatever I need for this for the glove which is fine because the fabric works out I you know just can't really charge for the materials that I bought for this one because that's on my fault my end usually when I messed up you know it's not fair to charge uh, for more materials because I already told the client how much I need so yeah so a little lost in profit but it's I just want to make sure the dress and everything works out and it fits perfectly because in the end I want them to be happy with the final costume so yeah it's been a rough week with it but I'm actually much more happy how this can come out once I iron it and everything uh, top stitch it'll look better than right now what's on the floor but yay that that happened it also works out much better because I decided to use Heathen Bond for the bottom part instead of interfacing it just so that it actually stays on and it's thicker and because of the Heathen Bond it actually made the bottom shape silhouette flare out much more than what I initially um, did on the other dress so actually the shape actually looks more accurate to how I want it so it was a little more work but you know I'm, what matters is that I'm more happy with it and it looks nice. So here is the dress currently right now. Uh, I think it's mostly all done. I attached on everything. I even did a little tab so that they can do an adjustable uh, bra strap. It's clear so they can take this off if they don't need it. But just in case, uh, you know, it's just something to hold it down so it doesn't slip and whatnot. And I added snaps because uh, this is where the cape's gonna be just so that it doesn't slide off. So I have almost everything done for the dress I just need to add in like a couple la last accessory like the bow in the back no idea what this accessory on the back supposed to be but I managed to figure it out by uh, playing with the design a bit and it looks around how it's supposed to be and yeah it's done also it's also attached by snaps stop that right on the back of the booty and it's all good So last thing is the gloves and I'll be finally complete with this commission. So for the gloves, um, what I'm actually going to do for it is uh, modifying a pair of gloves that I bought into what she has. I'll be adding on the accessories and cutting it apart and modifying whatnot. not. Uh, the reason why for this is because I usually give them the option if e they either want a gloves made from scratch, with, which I can do, or if they want, you know, uh, something to... Uh, 
uh, more cost efficient for the labor part then I can just buy it and then modify it from there which will take less time and so it will lessen the cost for labor which is uh, what they chose to do and that's what I'm doing so I got a pair of gloves right here and I'm going to modify it So the glove is looking good and promising. It's working out so far. So I basically chop off um, a chunk of the upper part of the glove. It's actually pretty long. It goes up all the way to my armpit. So I basically have to chop it off near the elbow area just so I can add on the knit part, which is the, um, the other knit part, I mean, which is the blue teal one right here. So it stretches all the way up. And the only part that doesn't stretch is the strap right here that goes around. And I'm probably gonna add snaps to it, which is the closure. In the art, uh, she basically has these two straps that rings around. And because these aren't knit, I'm making it fit perfectly. And the closure is probably gonna be snaps. The accessories and stuff is gonna go here. So I'll add those on later once I spray paint them and then I just need to add in like the little cuffs fur part that goes on top of the the wrist area and That's so far it for the gloves With the final pieces that I made separately and detachable by snaps the gloves are all finished And Annette is finally complete and I can wrap it up. It's uh, it's something. It's uh, It's been a wild uh, ride with her. Uh, a lot of mishap along the way. I ended up having to remake a lot of things. So a lot of thought process went into this and a lot of rethinking of what I should and shouldn't. Like the blouse and the dress. But yeah, those things happen even though I really don't want them to because materials and times and whatnot. But yeah, so uh, here she is. And that's it for uh, this project. With that, another commission is completed. As usual, all my progress has its ups and downs, but it never ceases to amaze me how many new things I still discover and pick up along the way, despite doing this for over a decade. I actually have another Fire Emblem commission project after Annette, so I'll be working on that one next maybe, depending on what I have, since many projects are backlogged right now, so we'll see. Thank you all so much for watching my sewing vlog on Annette's costume, and if you like my work and want to see more, give this video a like and sub, and stick around for more cosplay and shenanigans. Bye!